Okay, we got two Torah portions this week. I'm Luke Ford with David Suisa. It's the end of the Book of Numbers, and uh, so we got double the pleasure with with two Torah portions. And uh, and David and I have never done this Torah before. We've uh, spent many hours talking, but this is our first time, like sitting down and uh, no rehearsals. No rehearsals. We just Nothing. like jump right into it, and. Uh, I've got a thought here, starting off, according to, I was reading the, the in-depth Pasha study on Chabad.org. It says that the Hebrew word Midian means strife. Midian is the essence of divisiveness, which is the root of all evil. And I'm thinking, if there's anyone who is for Jewish unity, it's David Suisa. You've got your alum magazine, you've got a life of bringing Jews together. So when you talk about Jewish unity, what do you mean? I've changed over the years. My thinking has evolved. Yeah. I used to have uh, more of a naive, sort of superficial view of unity, which is uh, we're part of the same family. We ought to hold hands and right. uh, and and have the same goal. It was a little. It was a little superficial. It was sort of like uh, if you're a fan of the Lakers and you always stick up for the Lakers, then why can't you be the same with your Jewish tribe? But over the years, I've I've uh, sort of developed a little bit of a deeper notion of unity, mm -hmm. of unity, whereas um, the idea of disunity, the idea of uh, playing different instruments, yeah, that are completely at odds with each other, yeah, where on the surface I have no interest in your instrument, yeah, um, somehow seeing the value in something that I completely disagree with mm -hmm. has been my latest sort of challenge vis-à-vis -vis, uh, Jewish unity on the evil of Midian. Mm -hmm. What I found interesting in this week's Parsha mm -hmm. is that Moses, the holiest Jew in the Bible, who married a Midianite, actually does something that's appalling. He calls out for the murder. He calls out for the killing of every male among the infants. This is one of the toughest Parshas in the whole Torah. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember growing up in, in Hebrew school, this was the one that I sort of would hold my nose. Yeah. If, you can, if you're a Jew who can get by this Parsha, it's like the torture test. It's like the New York City of Parshas. Yeah. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. And there's a, there's a, a part in this Parsha that is often ignored. And I can tell you that in a couple of days, yeah. in Pico Robertson, yeah. not many rabbis. Yeah. are going to be talking about Moses asking for the killing of infants. Yeah. Um, and it's it's something I really struggle with, and I think we ought to spend some time talking about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. uh, how, could, how could the holiest Jew in the Bible do that? Yeah. What kind of a sin could justify asking his people? I mean, it's not just that he asked. Mm -hmm. It's that he's really, really angry when they come back from battle. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's angry yeah. that they didn't kill the women. Now, you know, he's angry. Yeah. How could the holiest Jew uh, be angry that the soldiers didn't kill the women? Imagine if today uh, this would be the equivalent of Baruch Goldstein. Yeah. Imagine if, uh, if a holy Jew today would, would make that request. There's no way we could accept it. Yet, it's in the Bible, it's in our Bible. And very few rabbis, this Shabbat, will talk about it. Yeah. You know, it's one of the things I struggle with with Orthodox Judaism mm -hmm. is how do we deal with the really, really ugly side of the Bible? How do right. we deal with it? And I find that often in the non-Orthodox world, there's a little more courage to deal with it. One of my favorite books these days mm -hmm. is by a conservative uh, great thinker, Richard Elliott Friedman. Oh, doesn't he teach at UC San Diego? Yeah. He's a Bible professor? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he wrote I, the book, who wrote the Bible. Exactly. Exactly, and he sort of he sort of takes it on, mm -hmm. you know, um, head on, mm -hmm. and and he, he tries to explain how this could be. But there are many ways of dealing with it. Like mm -hmm. the the Chabad, the Hasidic way, is to go right for the soul, is to explain it vis-à-vis -vis the soul. The, the the modern Orthodox way is to sort of you know um, talk about other things right. that lead you to a point of morality. 
the, the secular way is to get into the storytelling and just sort of wallow in how great the story is. Um, but, but there are many ways. And, and, and frankly, I think too often, you know, we don't deal with it. What's your thought on that, Lou? On well, I, I heard something fascinating from Dennis Prager the other day. I was listening to his lectures on, on the Torah. He taught the Torah verse by verse for 18 years at American Jewish University. And he said we should distinguish between when Moses speaks, between when Moses says he's speaking for God, and when God speaks. And Prager makes the point that God does not call on the Israelites to wipe out the Midian, the Canaanites. He calls on the Israelites to expel them from the land. Moses calls on the Israelites to exterminate the right. Canaanites. Right. But God never calls on the Israelites to exterminate the Canaanites. Right. So do we relate to whenever Moses speaks or acts in the Bible, do we automatically assume that this is God? Or is Moses a human being? He, Moses is a human being. Right. And we can still hold that every word of this Torah comes from God, but that doesn't mean that every person speaking in the Torah is speaking for God. When right. When Abraham says, Sarah's my sister, right. we don't assume that, that that's God speaking. And when Moses says, shall we bring forth water from the rock? You know, Aaron and I, shall we bring forth water from the rock rather than God bringing forth water from the rock? When, when Moses does that, we don't assume that that's God speaking. And when Moses is passive during the great idolatry and orgy of Baal Peor, where the Israelites go off and with the Midianite women and worship false gods, and Moses is passive and Pincus has to act. Now we don't assume that Moses' passivity is representing the divine viewpoint. So too, I think Moses is really angry, and he's probably angry at himself for being so passive during the idolatry episode with the, with the women of Baal Peor. And so when Moses says, exterminate the Canaanites, but nowhere does God say exterminate the Canaanites. Right. I see. I see. Uh, right. I think Moses is just being angry. And what's what's also remarkable is that at no point in the parsha do they actually tell you whether those women get killed or not, or whether the infants get killed or not. Mm -hmm. It's left up in the air. Is that because it would be too gruesome of information, or that's because they want to leave an opening for us to interpret it differently? Mm -hmm. um, also, the difference between God's word and Moses' word is mm -hmm. fascinating mm -hmm. because there's a section when God says to Moses, get revenge for the children of Israel from, a, from the Midianites and after you'll be gathered to your people. But Moses says something different. He says, get revenge for God. Mm -hmm. So God didn't take it personally. Mm -hmm. God put his ego aside mm -hmm. and he said, get revenge for you guys because this sin is on you. But since the, the children of Israel, they felt they sinned deliberately. So they felt they sinned against God. So their revenge was in the name of God. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting how God speaks in terms of the people and Moses speaks in terms of you dishonored God. So there's a dichotomy between mm -hmm. God's word and, and Moses' word. Uh, there's a Midrash, Midrash Tankuma, which which says that Moses replies to God, Master of the worlds, if we had not, if we had been uncircumcised or idol worshippers, or had denied the mitzvot, the Midianites would not have hated us. They only persecute us on account of the Torah and the precepts which you have given us. Consequently, the vengeance is yours. Yeah. It's like you, you saddled us with these laws and with this mission. Right. Of course, the the, the goyim are going to hate us, and uh, we take we take vengeance. Uh, uh, on, on your behalf, um, I think Rashi says here that, that to hate hate Israel is to hate God. And uh, yeah, there's a very complicated relationship between God and Mo between God and Moses. Yeah. And I think in in this case he's trying to drag him in mm -hmm. for the responsibility. Uh, there's another midrash I found mm -hmm. <coughs> that's interesting that connects this parsha with the mitzvah of tefillin. Hmm. And um, it says, upon the return from the battlefield, 
Moses realized that they had not properly carried out his order 